Okay, if, if you can answer this with a yes or no, are, are you 100% sure that you're one of Jesus' sheep? Yes. Okay, so it's impossible for you to lose your salvation. Impossible. I have the Holy Spirit in me. Impossible. Oh, okay, so what do you do? Let's, let's go to Colossians 1, okay? okay and let me, let me just read it again, and then just, just tell me how that speaks to you where he's speaking to a believer and says this, that you'll be presented without blemish, et cetera, if you Which continue passage? in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. So for you as a sheep of Jesus, how does that verse apply to you? Can you give me that passage again? So I, I'm, I'm pulling it up. I'm sorry. Colossians 1, mm -hmm. 21 to 23. I just didn't want to read all of it on, on your time here. Okay. So he's clearly writing to believers. You've been reconciled by Christ's physical body through death. You were once alienated. You're not anymore, right? And, and you'll be presented without blemish, free from accusation, if you continue in your faith, established and firm, and you're not moved from the hope held out in the gospel. Mm -hmm. So how does that relate to you? The Lord speaking that verse to you as one of his sheep, where he says this will happen if you continue in your faith. Why put the if there? If there's no possibility well, of you not continuing. Okay, good question. As I said before, the Bible also writes to people to warn them to make sure. And so he didn't just put the if there. He also put the, he put a gay. The gay is the indeed. And so he says, if indeed. And so Paul's saying, make sure. I think it's vitally important for everyone to make sure. Paul makes this statement. Jesus does. He says that uh, everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, and he says, for those who didn't actually know him, he didn't say, I used to know you. He said, I never knew you. The same thing here says, if indeed. So I believe that in order to be saved, you have to continue. You have to keep believing. You have to remain. You have to abide. I believe that you will. But if a person who is not, this is these are passages for them to make sure if indeed you are. If indeed you are, you're fine. If you're not, that's you. The, that's the person the warning is going to, to check oh, Okay. Let, let, let me just... Look at this again. You were alienated. You were enemies, but now he has reconciled you. All right. And he will present you holy without blemish. Isn't he clearly talking to believers there? Aren't you reading something in that's not in the text to say he's speaking to unbelievers among them? When he says you were reconciled and you will be presented holy, you were enemies, but you're not. You're reconciled. Isn't that explicit language that he's speaking to a believer there? So when you make the statement to a, to a large number, because the, the, the writer of well, Paul's not writing to one person, he's writing to a church. And so implicit in that there's going to be some that are believers, some that are not, some that think they are and so forth. And so if you were, so he's saying those that are forming, but this is why he says that a gay to make sure that is if indeed, that is make sure that's you, that is if indeed this is you who were forming. That's why you put this in there, the a gay in the Greek to say, if indeed you are. The same way that if you were up preaching and you were preaching to the church, you're going to tell the truth of the gospel, but then you're going to also say, make sure if indeed that is you. And so that's what the writer is saying here. Well, Paul is able to do that elsewhere, 2 Corinthians 13, examine yourselves to see whether you're in the faith. But he's not talking, saying examine yourself. He's saying if you continue in your faith, how can you continue in your faith unless you're in the faith? Because again, that's always been the, that's always been, again, if indeed you are continuing, if indeed you continue, present active indicative. And so that is, if indeed you are continuing. Well, remember, he's already, the Bible's already described what sheep do. The Bible's already described that sheep continue, that they believe, they follow and so forth. That's what they're doing. If that is you, then you're fine. So this applies to you, but if not, how else? How so it else doesn't mean continue. More? It means make a start. If you're not really saved, how can you continue? If he's writing to someone who's maybe not saved on the Colossians, which I completely reject, by the way, the language is 100% speaking to the elect there. But putting that aside, it, it, he says, if you continue, how can you continue if you're not saved? If you're not a sheep, well, how can you continue as a sheep? Here's the truth of the gospel. Wouldn't, Jesus he, wouldn't he have to say, if, if you repent and turn and be saved, how can I tell someone who is not saved to continue in a faith they don't have? A believer, or any, well, let me say this, any person can believe, a believer or a non-believer. And when I say believer, I mean a, a Christian, a non-Christian can believe. 
How do I know? Because Jesus makes this statement in, in Luke 8, speaking about the parable of the sowers and the, the, and the seed. And they're those that believe for a moment, but then they stop. So anyone can have a mental ascent. They can believe. It's the, it's the ability to continue. Where does it say mental ascent here? I'm, if I'm, you I'm, continue I'm, in your faith, he's saying if you stay in that I'm same just, faith that you have now, you'll be established and firm. You're saying they don't have any faith so at it, all. So, so it's possible. I'm just asking for, the, the, the explicit language, whether you can read Greek, whether this was in 10,000 languages, it's all saying the same thing. The word of God says in Colossians chapter 1, starting off in verse 21, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, that's prior to salvation, prior to faith in Christ, notice this, yet now hath he, what? Reconciled. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith, if, maybe you will, maybe you won't, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister." This passage is commonly cited to assert that an individual can forfeit their salvation if they fail to continue in the faith, persevering in good works and perpetual repentance from sin. First and foremost, it is imperative that we rightly divide the word of truth regarding our present reconciliation and our future presentation. We are reconciled to God by grace through faith in a moment of time. We are presented holy, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight if, again, maybe you will, maybe you won't, if we continue in the faith and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Look at verse 28 whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, why? That we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Watch this. The future presentation of a perfect man is conditioned upon a continuance in the faith. I'll say that again. The future presentation of a perfect man is conditioned upon a continuance in the faith. Perfect, meaning a complete Christian, a spiritually mature believer, one who has successfully grown in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, failure to do so does not result in a loss of salvation, but rather a loss of reward. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting off in verse 11, the word of God says this, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, watch this, which he hath built thereupon, he shall be saved. No, he shall receive what? A reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss of salvation. Is that what it says? No, he shall suffer loss of what? Contextually, a reward, but notice this, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. As always, failure to rightly divide between that which is reasonable and that which is required results in confusion and contradiction. Drawing a proper distinction between our present reconciliation and our future presentation is absolutely pivotal 
when dealing with this passage. If you are not 100% certain that you're going to heaven when you die, I encourage you to watch the video in the description below, How to Be Saved from Hell, The Only Way to Heaven, and Be Saved Today. God bless.